We are on the record. The time is 9.02, July 20, I'm sorry, July 8, 2020. This is the video deposition of Lieutenant Maximilian Forbridge in the matter of Myra Martinez versus Sheriff Mike Williams et al. Would counsel please identify themselves for the record and the court reporter will swear in the witness. Kirby Johnson on behalf of the plaintiff. Steve Powell with the Office of General Counsel for the City of Jacksonville. Mary Margaret Giannini with the Office of General Counsel for Officers Anders Vickery and Chastain. Paul Darajali on behalf of Officer Boris Sade. Sir, can you raise your right hand, please? If you swear or affirm a testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My name is Kirby Johnson, and I represent Myra Martinez in regards to an incident that occurred at uh, the Sally Port at the Duval County Jail on or about April 27, 2016. Before we get started, let me ask you, have you ever had your deposition taken before? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, just, just as a reminder, uh, some of the rules here. The, the woman to my right is the court reporter. She's She's typing down everything that's being said. She's very good at what she does. One thing she can't do is type down when two people are talking at the same time. Sometimes in the course of natural conversation, you may know where my question is going and answer it before it's completed. However, because we're trying to keep a record, if you would just refrain from answering until my question is complete, and I will try to refrain from asking you my next question until you've completed your answer. Is that, is that fair? Yes, sir. Okay. And if at any point in time you need to take a break, use the restroom, get some water, whatever, just let me know. We'd be happy to accommodate so long as there's not a pending question, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Can you tell me, uh, well, first, first things first, can you please spell your full name for the record, please? It's Maximilian J. Forbrick. It's M-A-X-I-M-I-L-I-A-N. Forbrick, F-O-R, B as in boy. R I C H. Thank you, sir. And what is your date of birth? March eighth, nineteen seventy-three. Are you married? Yes. Okay. You have uh, children? Yes. Okay. Who is your current employer? The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. And how long have you been employed with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? It'll be twenty-three years on September. Second. All right. What is your educational background? How did you graduate high school? Yes, sir. Where did you graduate high school? First Coast High School in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Or, excuse me, Jacksonville, Florida. What year did you graduate? 1991. Did you seek any post high school education? Yes, sir. And where was that at? I went to FCCJ, did some college. Then I entered the academy for the sheriff's office and began working with the sheriff's office. Okay. When you went to F FCCJ, what were you studying? Just basic education. Okay. I did not have a set course. Okay. And how long did you go to FCCJ? Approximately um, a year and a half. And after leaving FCCJ, did you go directly into the academy? No, sir. Okay, what did you do after you left FCCJ? Okay, I worked at uh, Spa Fitness as a personal trainer. I worked at the Sports Authority and I worked at the Marina Hotel as a room service personnel. Okay. When did you enter into the academy? The academy began in June of 95. What? What did you do when you were at the academy? Jackson form. In other words, what what happens at the at the JSO Academy? Do they do they I'm assuming they teach you 
I was see. trained to become a correction officer, sir. Okay. And how long did that training last? Approximately nine months. I think it was 640 hours of training. We were doing part-time in the evenings from 6 to 10 p.m. Did you only go through the JSO Academy one time? Yes, sir. Okay. Upon completion of the, well, did you complete the Academy? I'm yes, sir. Even. Upon completion of the Academy, were you then sworn in to be a police officer? No, sir. Okay, what, what was the process after you left the Academy? So, my class was not a hired class. We were not hired by the Sheriff's Office at the time we went through the academy. So when you got out, you had to apply for the sheriff's office to be hired. Um, approximately 18 months after the academy, I was hired in corrections. Okay. And at no point are we sworn in. So you were hired as a corrections sergeant, or a corrections officer? Yes, sir. Okay. And what year were you hired as a corrections officer? I was hired September 2nd, 1997. And maybe you can help me with this. But can you just explain generally the differences between a corrections officer and a police officer, if there are any? Objection to form. You can answer. I do not have arresting authority, as a police officer would. So I'm not sworn in to arrest people. Okay. I do not patrol the streets. I actually work inside of our Department of Corrections facilities. Okay, thank you. Have you worked for the, uh, as a corrections uh, officer with JSO since 1997 to present? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you been promoted at all since you were first hired in 1997? Yes, sir. When were you promoted and to what position? So in January of 2013 I was promoted to a sergeant and in December of 2016 I was promoted to lieutenant. I think you said this earlier but you are currently a lieutenant? Yes sir. Okay. At the, <coughs> at the academy that you went through was there a different academy for corrections officers and for police officers, or was it all the same curriculum? Different academies. It's different academies. And which academy did you, did you go to the corrections academy? Yes, sir. Okay. So if somebody was to be a JSO police officer, they would have gone through different training or a different academy than you would have. Is that fair? Different training, yes, sir. Kirby, I just want to make sure that we're not confusing things. There is one academy. Okay. And there are different curricula. Okay. I get it. So one... There's one facility. One facility, but they have different curriculum to write it up in between it. Is that what we're saying? Yes. I just wanted to make sure that you weren't unclear. I get it. Thank you, sir. Okay. I'm going to ask you some questions about event that occurred on April 27th, 2016 at the Sally Port with Miss Martinez. Uh, where were you uh, at the time uh, Miss Martinez was in the Sally Port? I was in the intake control pod for the majority of the time. However, Miss Martinez was in the Sally Port for an extended period of time. So I may have been in and out of that control pod going to the bathroom or wherever but that's where I was at and at some point when you were in the control pod did you <coughs> did you notice or did you become aware that there was an incident involving Miss Martinez yes I was and how did you become aware of the incident involving Miss Martinez there was some movement inside the Sally Port of the officers that were out there how many officers were out there I did not call an exact number. Is it unusual for there to be movement amongst the officers in the Sally Port? It 
could you expand on that a little more? Sure. Uh, I asked you when, when you became aware of the incident involving Ms. Martinez. Um, did you hear anybody say anything uh, in the Sally Court regarding Ms. Martinez? No, sir. Okay. At some point, did you, uh, well, you, in the control pod, is there, sur is there surveillance cameras yep. or monitors? Monitors, yes, sir. Okay. And from your position in the control pod, could you see what was going on on the monitors? Objection to form. You can answer. No. Possible. I think he's having difficulty with yeah. the question, Kirby, because we have a incident that plays out over a period of time. Maybe if you want to okay. put him in a sequence so he can tell you what he was doing at different points in time, that might be helpful. Right. I'm, tr I'm trying to establish when you first became aware that there was an incident involving Miss Martinez. Did you did you observe the incident between Miss Martinez and Officer Borshotti? I did not observe the incident that occurred between Borshotti and, and Miss Martinez. Okay. I was made aware of it because of some sudden movement maybe by the officers. I'm not sure and reviewed the tape. Okay. I'm sorry, and then you said and then you reviewed the tape? Yes. Okay. The officers who made the sudden movements, can you describe the officer? I cannot. I don't recall. Okay. Do you remember if it was an uh, African American officer or a white officer? I do not recall. Okay. How long after you saw this sudden movement did you decide to review the, review the tape? It would have been within a few minutes. I did. I could not give you a specific time frame, okay. but it would have been shortly thereafter. Okay. Now the tape that you reviewed, did it have audio? No, sir. Okay. What did you see when you reviewed the tape? Um, I saw. Officer Borosadi over there. I saw Miss Martinez attempt to kick Officer Borsati and saw Officer Borsati strike her a few times. And I don't know a specific number, okay. but I remember seeing that. Okay. Was Ms. Martinez handcuffed at the time? Yes, sir. When you went through the correction sergeant training at the academy, were you ever trained to use force or punch a handcuffed arrestee? Objection to form, compound, and ambiguous. Am I covering up my mic? Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. That's okay. Thank you, sir. Objection to form. You can answer. There is no corrections sergeant training at the academy. Corrections officer training? When you went through training at the academy, were, have you ever been trained to punch a handcuffed arrestee? There are circumstances that it is acceptable and it is okay. If I have an, an RSE biting me and I need to punch them to get them to release biting me, yes, that would be acceptable. Okay. From your review of the, of the video, do you, did you ever see Ms. Martinez bite Officer Borsani? No, sir. Is there any other instance where you can, that, well, did you see anything in the video that would warrant Officer Borsani punching Miss Martinez? No, sir. Okay. After watching the video, what did you do? I went to 
our intake vestibule door for the one called Officer Borsati over because Officer Borsati was standing with the group of officers basically just standing there so I called him over and I instructed him that he needed to do something you know you need to write a report I I told him that there's video cameras videoing this you can't act as if this did not occur it did and you need to write a report you need to get her checked out you know call rescue whatever you need to do something you need to act you cannot just strike this lady and pretend it did not occur about how long after the incident did you speak to Borisati? I, I don't know it was a very short period of time right after I viewed the the video so prior to you speaking to Officer Borisati, are you aware of anybody calling Jacksonville Fire and Rescue? No, sir. Did you speak to anybody other than the officers that were on scene about this incident? Checking the form. On, on April 27, 2016. Same objection. He hasn't testified to talking to anyone other than Borishadi at this point. Right. He used the plural. Okay. If you talked, did you talk to any officer other than Officer Borisati about this incident on April 27, 2016? I believe Officer Biakowski had also told me, he's like, hey, you need to review this or look at the tape. Um, and I spoke with the police officer in charge that was acting as Borsati's sergeant at the time, which would be a police officer in charge if the sergeant was off. They had appointed an, an officer to kind of watch it. So Borsati had called him, and I had talked to him on the cell phone, okay. on Borsati's cell phone. Do you remember the name of the pol police in charge? No, sir. Is it, does uh, Officer Garriott sound familiar? I, I can't recall, sir. Okay, and that's fine. It's four years ago. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you believe you said Officer Viakowski? Viakowski. Viakowski. B, B. B. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Bielkowski. And who is Officer Bielkowski? Bielkowski was an officer that was working in the control pod at the time. He would have been the one taking care of the paperwork to bring the the inmates into the facility. Okay. Is he a corrections officer? He was at that time. He is currently a police officer. Okay. And PIC, the, the PIC that you spoke with at the time would have been a police officer? Yes, sir. Okay. What do you recall about your conversation with the police officer in charge, or police in charge? I remember him asking me, you know, if it's like, was it bad? I'm like, it's pretty bad. So, I, other than that, he he was. I can't remember. I remember telling him it was, pre it was pretty bad, and that. Yeah, he needed to come up there or something along those lines. And when you say it's pretty bad, what what are you referring to? Also, Borisadi striking, Miss Martinez. At any point in time, did you hear Ms. Martinez say anything? Objection to form. You can answer. Sure, I had a conversation with Ms. Martinez after she came into the into our intake vestibule. Okay. As she, did you hear Ms. Martinez say anything while she was in the Sally Court? I could not make out any words. I could see her being animated, walking back and forth towards the officers, back to her area that we normally would stay, or they normally would stay. But the actual words, no. 
it's, there's a class and everything there that's kind of blocking that, the majority of it. Yes, sir. At some point, was Jackson, did Jacksonville Fire and Rescue arrive? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you speak with anybody uh, from Jacksonville Fire and Rescue on that day? I do not recall. Okay. Do you recall who may have spoken with anybody from Jacksonville Fire and Rescue on that day? It would have been me or one of my officers that were working in the intake vestibule. Okay. At the, and obviously Officer Borsati, who, who's the inmate, you know, who he had arrested her, him too. So I'd, um, but I don't recall exactly speaking myself to the okay. JFRD. Do you recall Officer Borsati talking to the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue? I do not. Did you ever speak with Officer Andres about this incident? I don't believe so. Okay. Following the incident at the Sally Port, uh, was Miss Martinez taken back into the jail? After the you can answer. After JFRD cleared her, then she was accepted into the jail, yes. Okay. Can you, what is the process when an inmate gets brought into the jail? Well, they are searched. We go through their property. We inventory their property. We take it to the property room, give them a uniform. They go into a dress room. They change into a jail issue uniform. They take their clothes, place it inside the brown paper bag that the uniform came in. They go to the property window. The property officer inventories their property, inventories their clothing, gives them a receipt for it, and they move on to the next area, the booking area, or ID, printing, get their fingerprints, and booking. Okay. Miss, Miss, Miss Martinez is, is a female. It's during this intake process, is it common to have someone of the same gender do the intake? Yes. Okay. Do you recall who did the intake process for Ms. Martinez? Yes. And who was that? Officer Alexis Smith. Prior to Ms. Martinez, well, did you inform Ms. Smith about the incident that had occurred in the Sally Port prior to the intake? Yes. And what did you tell her? I believe I told her to be lenient, meaning we don't want to have another incident with her. That there's already this, she's going to be in a, her state of mind is probably not the best. She's already very agitated, most likely because of the incident that occurred. And to try and just process her without having another incident because she was very animated and you could tell she was obviously on, she appeared to be a, on some unknown substance. She and wasn't was acting normal, per se. When you say you observed her acting not normal, was that before or after Officer Borisati struck her? I would say the way that she was acting pr prior to when she was walking back and forth between the officers and like I said she was very animated then she's yelling and stuff I couldn't make out exactly what was being said but, but she appeared to be very agitated at the time so is, is that I couldn't determine that she was on a substance at that moment but after being talking to her and seeing how she was up and down and just the way her actions were, it just appeared that she was on some type of substance. Okay. Is it unusual for arrestees to 
to say things to the officers when they're waiting to be go through the intake process? Are you referring to inside the jail or are you referring to outside in the Sally Port? In the Sally Port. No. It's it's not uncommon. So so it is a common occurrence. It's not uncommon in the sense that an inmate's placed over here by a door, and the officers are over here working by a window. For that inmate to make comments from here, that is not uncommon. However, the walking back and forth and being very animated the way she was, that was uncommon. Maybe. Can you describe how she was being animated? Moving her body when she's yelling, bending over, throwing her shoulders, just, that's, that's all I can remember of it at this point. Do you know if any of the officers, other than Officer Borsati, obviously, suggested the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department be called prior to you suggesting to Officer Borsati the fire, Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department be called? I did not know. Did you hear Officer Borsati make any verbal commands to Ms. Martinez? No, sir. I think you said you could hear some sound and some noise coming from Ms. Martinez, but you couldn't make out the words. Is that correct? Correct. Did you hear any noise or sound coming from Officer Borsati? No, sir. Now, in the in the Sally Port, I believe you said that the suspect or the arrestee generally is up against the wall and the officers are in front of the vestibule doing what they do. Is that right? Is that what you said? I said they're up against the wall. They're near this, uh, the intake vestibule door and the officers are in front of the control pod window. So, okay. Is there any, any rule or or law that says that they have to stay up against the wall and they can't cross a certain line? Not that I'm aware of. When you went through the academy Did they train you on how to use hands-on techniques? Yes, sir. When you were at the academy, did they train you in de-escalation techniques? Yes, sir. What are some of the de-escalation techniques that you were taught in the academy? Maintain a calm demeanor. Um, That's really what we're taught is to maintain a calm demeanor and attempt to talk the person down and kind of calm them, de-escalate the situation. Okay. From your perspective, from your review of the video, did Officer Borisade have a calm demeanor or use any verbal commands? Objective form. You can answer. I could not hear if Officer Borsati was giving them, giving her commands. He did. He. He appeared calm walking up to her. When. When. Can an officer go hands-on with a, an arrestee? Objective form. You can answer. I mean, what I'm trying to figure out is, is there a spectrum here 
of, of the force that gets used? Is there a progression that you're taught to go through? Yes. Okay. And in that progression, what would what was what was the first what's the first step in that progression? Where we go hands on is when there's active physical resistance. Okay. Again, going back to the spectrum and the progression, what would be the step before you go hands on? Injection to form. You asked about a progression of using hands-on force. I'll withdraw the question. Uh, make sure that we're getting one. Thank you. Did you see Miss Martinez use or contact Officer Borshotti before strike that? Did you see Miss Martinez contact Officer Borshotti first? Objection to form. You can answer. When I reviewed the tape, just again, I did not actually witness the incident live. When I reviewed the tape, I remember Miss Martinez attempting to kick Officer Borisati. I do not remember if it if she made contact with him or not, and that was prior to him striking her. Okay. And at that time, Miss Miss Martinez was handcuffed. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Are you aware of? At the time that you reviewed the tape, were you aware of why Miss Martinez was arrested? No, sir. As you sit here today, were you aware of why Miss Martinez was arrested? Objection to form. You can answer. Um, the as question is, does he, uh, does he today know why she was arrested? Yes. No. So she was arrested. I don't remember her charges. I, don't, I know she was in a, a club, and my understanding is that the manager kicked her out or something, and then Officer Borisade arrested her for whatever her charge was. I don't, I don't know what her charge was. Are you aware, as you sit here today, of any incident that, I, that any physical altercation that occurred during her arrest at the Scores Gentlemen's Club? Um, I, yes. Okay. How did you become aware of that incident? I don't recall. Do you remember seeing it on the news? I may have read it on like News for Jacks or something. I don't, I don't recall how I became aware of the, the previous incident. But, yeah. Okay. Is it safe to say that you became aware of the incident that occurred during her arrest at some day after April 27, 2016? Yes, sir. Okay. I think you, you, you testified earlier that when Jacksonville Fire and Rescue got there, that Officer Borshotti spoke with them. Is that correct? Jackson informed. You can answer. I am not aware of that if he did or not, but with that being his inmate, he most likely did. At some point, were you called in to give a statement as to what you saw? 
Yes, sir. And when was that? Uh, I believe it was November 2nd of 2016. And this incident again happened April 27th, 2016. Why, uh, you may not know this, but do you know the reason for the delay before giving your statement? You would have to ask the internal affairs investigators. Okay. Is the first time internal affairs investigators, they ask for your statement, was that in November? I believe so. Okay. Other than the police in charge and Officer Bajakowski, did you report the incident that you saw to anybody? My lieutenant would have been made aware of it. I cannot. Did you inform your lieutenant? I don't recall. So um, I don't want to say yes because I don't recall if it was me or one of my officers informed her. Okay, but either way, your lieutenant knew about yes. it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Were you ever instructed to do a response to resistance report on the incident that occurred in the Sally Port? No, sir. Do you know if a response to resistance report was completed by Officer Borisati for the incident in, that occurred in the Sally Port? I do not know. I did tell him when I was talking to him that he needed to write, write that up. So I hope that he did. And what is what is the, the procedure for when when a response to resistant reports needs to be written? What are the what are what are the factors? What, what are the requirements? If a person is injured, if they, or if they complain of injury, or you ob observe it. An injury. Okay. And based upon what you saw, you believed that a response to resistance report should have been completed by Officer Borshadi. Is that correct? Judge Four. You can answer. So yeah, I believe it should have been yes. So after Ms. Martinez leaves the Sally Port area and goes into the, where, where's the next place she goes? What, what is that place called? The Intake Vestibule. The Intake Vestibule, thank you. And is that where she goes through and, and turns over all of her personal property? Is that where that process takes place? That's where it begins, yes sir. Okay. And I believe you testified it was Miss or Officer Smith? Yes sir. For the female uh, intake officer? Is yes sir. Was there, was there another incident that occurred between Ms. Martinez and Ms. Smith in the intake festival? Yes, sir. Okay. Were you present during that incident? Yes, sir. Can you describe what you saw? Ms. Martinez was in the intake vestibule, and Officer Smith was having to remove her jewelry, earrings, whatever jewelry she had. She said, I believe that she removed her earrings, and then... Uh, we always ask them if they have any other piercings because we have them remove them too. She's like, yes, pulled her top down, and she had a belly ring. So Ms. Smith told her, put your top up, and there's a bathroom in that vestibule. So she opened the door to the bathroom there, allowed her to step in there so that she could remove the belly ring versus doing it right in front of everybody because she was wearing a romper at the time, so she had to actually pull the top down versus pull her shirt up. So during that, while she was in the restroom, Ms. Martinez, I want to say, took her romper completely off and tried to throw it at Officer Smith, at which point Officer Smith grabbed her and was taking her to the ground, and that's where me and the other officers responded to assist her in 
placing her on the ground to get her in restraints. Okay. When Miss Martinez took her romper off and threw it, do you know if it made contact with Officer Schmidt? I do not recall. Do you know, was Miss Martinez handcuffed at that time? She was not. Do you recall her having any other piercings other than her belly button being, being an issue? Not that I was aware of. Okay. Well, wait a minute. She had the, the stud in her nose. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. She did have that, yes. Was there some sort of issue with that? So if you cannot remove it, if it can't be removed, then there's no issue with it. I mean, Sometimes those things are like welded shut or glued when they put them on so that they cannot be removed. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, we're not going to cut it off. That's just okay. That's part of you, and it's, it's going to go in with you. Okay. So, and I believe that was the case with her. She said that it couldn't be removed. Or I've got here a recording that you did. Um, Kirby, if we're, we're going to yeah. move into that sort of phase of things, maybe yeah. take a quick break. Let's do it. Okay, going yeah. off the record at 9.44. We are back on the record at 9.55. Right. Was there ever an investigation or, uh, yeah, was there ever an investigation into Miss Martinez and her k kicking of Officer Borsati? I don't know. All right, I'm going to play for you a statement that you gave, I believe you said it was in November. And I may have some questions for you along the way. If I do, I'll just pause it and ask them, okay? I'm Detective Strong S. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm Detective S. A. Strong 97439 with the Internal Affairs Unit. Today's date is November 2nd, 2016, and the time is 3:09 p.m. Uh, this. Did you review this recorded statement prior to your deposition today? I haven't heard that tape ever. Okay. Interviews being conducted at 501 Space Street in reference to Administrative Case Number 16-00265. Present for the interview is Corrections um, Sergeant Forbrick. Is that how you say it? Yes, sir. Okay. Sergeant Forbrick, prior to the um, start of the interview, did we review and you signed the member witness form, administrative rights form, and sworn statement affidavit? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you understand that the statement you're about to make regarding this investigation will be made under oath? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And do you understand that making false statements under oath is a crime of perjury under Florida statutes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and do you have any questions regarding any of these forms that you signed prior to uh, the start of the interview? No, ma'am. Okay, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Uh, please state your full name, ID number, and current assignment uh, for the record. Maximilian Joseph Forbrick, ID 7575. I am the ITR sergeant. Okay. Um, and when you, and that's at the pre-trial detention facility, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, when you say ITR sergeant, what does that stand for? Intake, transfer, and releasing sergeant. Okay. So on April 27, 2016, was that the same position that you were in, the ITR sergeant? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, on that date, uh, did you witness an incident involving Officer Borsade and inmate Myron Martinez that occurred in the Sally Port? I did not witness it at the time that it occurred. I knew something happened because of the officers that were moving towards the event, but I did not physically witness the actual event. Okay. And your position during um, the incident that occurred between Borisani and Martinez, you were actually inside the intake um, control. control and sort of that window area, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. 
Um, and the incident occurred next to the door to the intake vestibule um, and sort of near a trash can. What would you have been able to see, I guess, was that the east, out of that east window? window? Well, in that east window, there's two or three computer screens. Because actually, I think there's three computer screens. Had I been looking at them, I probably could have seen the entire occurrence had I been looking in that area, looking between the computers through that section of the window. And that area is it's kind of raised up a little bit. Yes, sir. Um, it's elevated. It's elevated from the Sally Port area, but in this case, you said you were you did not see the incident. What were I you did, doing? I did not see the incident. I was actually in the control pod. I believe I was looking into the into the shakedown area, the pit area, or. <laughs> I don't know if it's 100% certain what I was looking at. I remember I did not see the incident when it occurred. I may have been talking to Officer Bielkowski about an inmate that we were trying to bring in for Basadi that had 103 warrants, 104 warrants, something like that. We were trying to get it all worked out as to how many dockets we needed to do, and we were working at that. Okay. Um, and you you referenced um, Officer Bielkowski. He was the intake officer at the time in the control pod with you. Yes, working the, working the computers, accepting people. Was there anyone else in that intake area that you're aware of? Or do you I do not it? remember, ma'am. Okay. All right, so you said you didn't witness the incident, but you knew something had happened because of the movement that you saw outside. towards the intake vestibule. Outside. The movement that I saw in the Sally Port, moving towards where the incident yeah. occurred. Okay. The officers that were responding, the, I don't remember if the CSO officer responded to it or just stood there with the glazed look on his face. I don't, I don't recall exactly. Okay. Uh, so after you thought that something happened, did anyone say to you, hey, something's happened, you know, you guys need to check it out? Or did you think maybe I need to figure out what just occurred? Uh, I don't remember anybody saying anything to me. I think... I. I, I Okay, if you don't recall, yeah, then that's so you don't recall. Um, and, and, and you may not recall if anybody said anything to you. Do you remember making the, the decision to review the film? Was that a decision that you made, or is that a decision that... How, how did that come about? It was a decision I made. I want to say... I think Officer Bielkowski said something to me about it because he may have seen it on the camera when it occurred okay but I, you know can't speak for him so the monitors in the control pod are they live meaning if if i look at the monitors am i seeing what's currently happening it could be okay. it also could be that we have something pulled up that we were reviewing it would be on that same monitor, so you wouldn't be watching what is live. So at the time that the incident occurred, I can't say with 100% certainty that it was on actual what was going on. It may have had something else pulled up on the screen that was paused, and it would have been blocking. Understood. Because you have the ability to fast forward, or you have the rewind. ability to rewind, yes, pause, sir. and review video on those monitors. Is that right? Yes, sir. And you reviewed the incident on those monitors in the control pod? Yes, sir. And actually, let me rewind a little bit. Prior to Martinez uh, being accepted into the pit area, which I, I've been calling the intake vestibule. Right. Um, did anyone come to you guys in the window and ask for her to be let in early or complain of her behavior outside in the Sally Port? Do you recall that? Not that I'm aware of, they would have, had they done that, they probably would have asked Officer Bielkowski because he would have been the one by the window that would have been answered, fielding those type of questions. Okay, and I understand she was not taken into, we'll, we'll get back to the actual incident, but she wasn't taken into the uh, pit area until a female officer was available, is that correct? correct? And and that's sort of the practice of that's the jail, policy. that's the policy. We have to have a female officer present to bring in a female inmate. Okay. And at that point, I think Officer Smith was the only female officer working that area? I believe so. I, I don't know. Okay. And she, may have been too, but 
Okay. She was definitely working the area. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's go back to the actual um, incident when you saw the movement, and then at some point um, determined that you needed to figure out what had occurred. What did you do? Uh, we pulled the tape or rewound the tape on the computers that are right there. Pulled it back. There's a it's the video that everybody's seen. Pulled that video, rewound the video, and I looked at the video. I was like, oh my god. So at that point, uh, when you said when you said you looked at the video and you were like, oh my god, are you referring to Officer Borisati's actions? Yes, sir. Did you talk with Officer Borisati? I did. I called him over to the not the pit door, but the other intake okay. door in the Sally Port. All right. Called him over there. He had his weapon on, so he couldn't step inside. I told him, I was like, dude, you've got to do something here. Because he, he acted like nothing happened. He stepped back, stood there. I think he crossed his arms and was acting casual. Nothing's going on. Did you know that Miss Martinez was on the ground at this point? Could you I see? I could where not she see where she was at. No, not from okay. where I was at. I couldn't see where she was at. But I had seen the video. I'm like, oh my God, you, you need to do something here. Okay. So, Officer Borshade appeared to you as if he was not concerned with, with what had just happened. Is that fair? Objectable. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. You can answer. Can you rephrase that for me sure. one more time? Sure. Did Officer Borisati ever appear to acknowledge what he had just done to Miss Martinez? Objective form. I don't. What does that mean? Did. Alright, let me rephrase it then. Well, let me rewind it, actually. That may be the best way to do it. So he couldn't step inside. I told him, I was like, dude, you've got to do something here. Because he. he Acted like nothing happened. He what do you mean by Officer Borisati acted like nothing happened? He wasn't taking any further action after the incident. Okay. Was any officer in the Sally Port taking any action at that time? I can't recall. There Were there other officers in, in the Sally Port at that time? Yes, sir. That back stood there. I think he crossed his arms and was acting casual. Nothing's going on. Did you know that Miss Martinez was on the ground at this point? Could you I see? I could not see where she was at. No, not from okay. where I was. At. I couldn't see where she's at. But I had seen the video. I'm like, oh my god, you, you need to do something here. Okay. Um, did you instruct him to call for fire rescue? I. I did. Um, I did tell him that because. That was a little later on uh, when the initial incident occurred and I had talked to him the first time, like, dude, you got to do something here. You can't just pretend this didn't happen. I told him, I pointed out the camera to him. I was like, there's a camera right there. Just videoed everything you did. Mm -hmm. He's like, you got to do something. You got to follow up on this. And he, he told me at that point, he's like, she kicked me in the balls. I said, okay. Then put a battery charge on her, but you better do something. You can't act like this didn't happen. You better write a report. Do you know if Officer Borsade ever put a battery charge on her for kicking him? I do not know. Okay. Do you know if Officer Borsade ever read a, wrote a report? I do not know. Put charges on her or something. Something has to happen. You can't just leave it as if this never occurred. Okay. And what did he tell you? Uh, he said, I don't remember exact wording, but it was something along the lines of, it wasn't that serious or it wasn't that bad or something. And I was like, no, you need to do something that is that bad. Okay. So uh, after that, he went back out to the selling port. And I saw him get on the phone. Uh, and that, that was the end of it at that point. Okay. Um, so at some point he called his um, PIC or patrolman in charge and um, you spoke with a patrolman in yes, charge, is that? Yes, okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, what, what, can you tell me about that conversation to the best of your ability? The patrol officer asked me, he's like, you know, is, is it is it bad? I'm like, it's, it's pretty bad. I'm like, yes, it's 
pretty bad. But you didn't go into detail on the phone about what had occurred. No, no ma'am. I, I don't believe so. Okay. I'm not 100% sure if I did or didn't, but I don't think so at this point. But you were, you definitely recall telling him it was bad? Uh, yeah, I told him. It's, like, it's, it's pretty bad. Yeah. But yes, I do recall that. Okay. Um, do you recall anything else about that conversation? Did, did you all have any conversation about what needed to happen going forward or um i do not recall okay i don't recall it. okay so that conversation occurred and then you after that told borisati you need to call for medical help yes what, what made you tell him to call for rescue when we were going to bring her in there was i believe there was another female out there and uh I think at that point I'm like getting on my toes looking and seeing she's she's on the ground. When you say you got on your toes and you see that she's on the ground, is the she that you're referring to, Miss Martinez? Yes, sir. And at that point, how long had that been since Officer Borisati had struck her? I have no idea. Can you give? I mean, was this? Can you give an approximation, an estimate? What do I say? A short period of time. I, I, I would have to go with 10 minutes or less. I'd okay. Like, dude, we rolled the doors to the pit. Had Officer Padgett go out because he was going to have them come in. Does it mean Who's Officer Padgett? He's an officer that works for me. He's a corrections officer? Yes, sir. Okay. How did, did you speak to Corrections Officer Padgett about this incident before he went out to check on Ms. Martinez? Yes. As, as I recall, I had stepped up on toes, looked over, saw her on the ground. And so I told Padgett, look at her, see if she can come in or not. Because if they're unconscious or if you're to have injuries and stuff, we're going to get them checked out first. So uh, we rolled the door, Padgett walked over, looked. Shook his head to me, he's like, ooh. I was like, okay. Close the door, and that's what I told him. I was like, you gotta get a rescue or somebody to come check her out. Okay. So, Officer Padgett made some sort of signal, hand signal to you? Like, no? I believe he shook his head. I, I, he did a signal, yeah, because I couldn't hear him there. Right. So it was a, a signal. Okay. And, and you interpreted that signal to mean? She can't come in. And why, why would that have been the case? Because at the time, form. why would? Okay, I think we know. No, she can bring him in as long as there's a female present. So he poked his head out there. She was still on the ground. I think he nudged her or something. He looked at me. He shook his head. And we rolled the door shut. I told him, I was like, dude, you better call rescue. So we're not taking her in. If she ain't up on her feet, if she if she's injured or something, you better get rescue out here. Okay. Did um, do you recall if we called for a nurse to come down, meaning the jail? Did do you recall? Um, at some point, a nurse was called. At, uh, I. But you don't recall no, when during that time frame, no, whether it was before rescue or after rescue. No, ma'am. Okay. Do you recall who called for a nurse to be down there? I did not. Okay. I don't recall. I want to say Persadi told me something along the lines that she's faking it. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, yeah, I remember he did tell me that. It's like, well, she's faking it. Did you ask her if he was, uh, did you ask Borisati if, if Martinez was okay, or did you talk to him about her condition on the... I, I told him, was like, look, she's sitting there on the ground. If she ain't getting up, we ain't taking her in. He told me she's faking it. I'm like, that's fine. She's faking it, that's fine, but you better get her up on her feet so that we can bring her in. The current condition she's in, we're not bringing her in. You better call rescue, is what I instructed him. I was like, if, she, if that's... Even if she's faking it, CYA, get rescue out here. Get rescue to clear her. Did, um, could you hear any, anything that... What do you mean by that, CYA? Like, I know, I know what it means. I'm not asking you to, to, to say what that means. But in the context of, of how you used it, were you saying that Officer Borsati needed to do some things to... Yes, after the, after his incident with her, you know, he needs to document it, you know, if she's even faking an injury, still we need to get her checked out. At that point, she was sitting there, 
and I want to say she had her head down or something. I, I don't know for sure. But if she's, if she's up, if she's conscious, okay, we can bring her in. We can do this. But in the current state that she was at that moment, it's like you better get rescue out here or something to, to make sure she's okay. Because okay. if I'm not medical, I can't say that she's faking it. Neither is he. Uh, and that was going to be my next question. Yes. As, as, a, as a police officer or as a corrections officer, are you guys trained in to make the determination if, if somebody is faking an injury or is not faking an injury? I'm not medically trained. Okay. Do you know, are, are police officers medically trained? They're... So you my previous statement might be a little off too, because we are trained to do CPR and and you know first responder stuff when somebody's injured. We'll, we'll start medical stuff, but we'll always call rescue or our nurses in the jail or whoever to come take over. So we will respond to it initially, try and stabilize or whatever. So we are medically trained to a degree. You're trained to provide medical services. Are you trained to make a determination? not to provide medical services. In other words, are you trained to, oh, well, she's faking it, I don't need to, to provide medical services to this individual? You can answer. It's, uh, we can observe what we see and, and make our best determination. And based on your, what you saw and your determination was that Miss Martinez needed to get some medical attention on that day, is that correct? Yes, sir. She needed to be evaluated. What was happening out in the Sally Port, for example, could you hear Martinez complaining of injuries or moaning or groaning or, or saying anything? Could you hear no, any, anything like that? Okay. I mean, prior to this, I did, I had seen that Martinez was going back and forth from the area of the pit door to where the officers are and was yelling at them. There were several officers in the area and I know she was she was badgering them from that was just obvious. I mean and that was it was going on for a while because we had this other one with a hundred warrants that we were trying to get worked out before we could bring them in. Yeah, do you um, at, at any point did did J the jail or, or anyone in the jail try to speed up the process to get her inside. Yes, man. We stopped. Actually, we stopped working on the one that had all the warrants. I was like, let's let's get her in, get her away from her way out there. And this was after the incident. Yeah. yeah How about yeah. prior to that? Uh, had any? Do you know of? And if you don't recall, say no, you know yeah, you can say that. I, I do you know if someone called Officer Smith and said, "Hey, I need, we need you to come like now, so that I, we can get her inside the." I want to say that Officer Smith was the only officer working, the female officer working that night, and she possibly, I don't know. She I'm was make processing it. Up, don't, don't make, yeah, she Yeah, didn't. I'm trying to put things together. And, that's and fine. That's I, I know it's been a while, so please, if yeah. you don't recall, don't try to, don't try to. Put make, stuff in there to make yes, it right. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not. Just tell me what you remember and to the best remember. of your ability. I don't, Officer Smith responds quickly. When we, when we need her, she comes and it's okay. not. It's not a problem, like trying to search to find out if she's hiding somewhere or not doing her job. It's my understanding she was processing a juvenile. Like and that's what, that's what I was about to say. She was probably doing this, but I don't know. Don't remember for sure. That's fine. So I imagine she was. Okay, that's fine. And I just want to clarify, when you say I'm making this up, you're not talking about you're making up what you told me. You no. said that you were trying to... Put together okay. why she wasn't there sooner or earlier and... and so all. everything that you've told me so far it's is true. Yes, yes. Okay, all right. That's, I just want to clarify that. Yes, um, okay, so... All right, so... Rescue comes... Um, they check Miss Martinez out. Do you know why she wasn't transported, or do you have any information uh, about that? If you they don't. cleared her. Okay. And that's all I know. When you say they cleared her, are you referring to Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department? Yes, sir. Did they tell you that they cleared her? I don't recall if they told me, or if they told one of my officers, or if they told one of the officers that were out there in the Sally Port. Okay. So they could have told Officer Borashati that they are cleared her? Yes. I don't even remember if I went out there. I think I did go out there. I don't know. It would be on video if I did. Okay. 
would there be a reason or have we um, as past practice when rescue comes um, told rescue that we would have jail personnel transport her if she needed to go to the hospital no ma'am and why is that if they're in need of medical assistance enough to go to a hospital they have an ambulance that responds to the facility they can transport them I don't need to put that liability on my officers to transport somebody and let them possibly die in the back of the vehicle as we're taking them when there's an ambulance right there. So if rescue didn't transport her, she didn't need to go, is that? Generally speaking, yes. However, rescue a lot of times does. Officers get involved with incidents. People get injured, rescue comes, okay, wraps a little bandage on their arm, says they're good. The inmate comes into the jail, have the nurse check her out. Nurse nurse opens up the, the wound that this person's been cleared from rescue and like we're not accepting that okay. they need stitches but so. our past practice or our practice is that we would not tell rescue that okay. we would transport them no. to the hospital if they needed to go no i mean it, no. it would have been incumbent on rescue to take her if she needed to be transported is yeah. that okay um okay it would be incumbent upon rescue to transport her if, if necessary. Is, is that was were you assuming when you answered that question? Yeah, yes. Objection for assuming what? Assuming that it's incumbent upon JFRD to make that determination. Are you trained? Have you have you ever worked for the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department? No, sir. Okay. The rescue clears her. Uh, and and you were not and you don't recall ever having a conversation with the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department on that day. Is that correct? Correct. Um, and As of today. I'm sorry. As of today, if I said something on there where I did, that was four years ago or three uh, and a half uh, years ago. I understand. Years. Yeah. Okay. No, that's that. I'm not trying to trip you up here. I'm trying okay. to get to, to the truth. Your intake uh, yes. into the intake vestibule or the pit. Um, now you are still in the glass control, uh, control pod area when Ms. Martinez comes into the pit. Can you hear anything that's happening or being said between Ms. Martinez and um, Officer Smith? Very little. Okay. Uh, prior to her come in, I did talk to Officer Smith and I told Officer Smith, I was like, look, she just had a, uh, an incident out there in the pit. She's very pissed off. Mean out in the Sally Port? Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. She's in the Sally Port. So she's pissed off. She's belligerent. Do you recall if you told Officer Smith that Officer Borisati had punched Miss Martinez? I don't recall. Do what you can not to have an incident with her. But if we got if we have to, we have to. But try and give her be very lenient with her with her actions right now. Because I, I know she's just pissed, completely okay. pissed off. So you basically told Officer Smith to try to avoid any sort of use of force if possible. Right. Um, okay. So Officer Smith gets her in and as an intake officer, um, we, we take property off of suspects so that they can be accepted into the facility. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And part of taking uh, property off is like, it's keys, it's um, n obviously not knives, but jewelry, necklaces, necklaces watches, yes. you know, shoes that have weird, you know, if, so if there was a bottle over, her, yeah. right, exactly. Um, so in, in this case, uh, Miss Martinez was asked to remove um, several piercings. Yes. Is that, do you have any independent knowledge of that, or is that just what you remember reading from the reports? Uh, that's done on every every inmate that has piercings. Okay, so I understand. I wasn't there present when she told her to no. Okay. Sitting in the pod. You were sitting in the pod, but yes. you know that that's what they do to collect yes, their property. Okay, so at some point in the intake in the pit area, Miss um, Martinez removes her top. Yes, ma'am. Um, and then Officer Smith escorts her into the restroom area that's located there. Um, that would be something that we would normally do for it. Um, suspects that are dressed inappropriately uh, we would try to protect their yeah we try to you know not embarrass them have them run around naked or anything like that uh, she had a, a romper on is what it was and she had a belly ring so she snatched her top down and I remember officer smith yelling at her to pull her top up mm -hmm. so she pulled her top up that's when officer smith took her into the bathroom 
and was going to allow her in the bathroom to pull her top down to take her, her belly ring out. Okay. Um, and then at some point in the bathroom, Officer Smith felt it necessary to take Miss Martinez to the ground. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, and in doing um, so, uh, other corrections on Officer Smith and, and other corrections officers who were documented in these RTR reports um, had to hold Miss Martinez down and um, so that they could one remove her jewelry, two get her dressed um, out as an inmate, collect her property. Um, I don't remember us removing any jewelry once we had her on the ground. I think she had it off at that point. Okay. So, you, so you recall that she removed her belly ring. Now she also had a piercing in her face, which stayed in. Which stayed in. Okay. Yes, now, would there be an occasion where we would have to leave piercings in? Uh, yes, ma'am. If, if they if they don't snap or, or screw on or off, if they're the permanent piercings, we we leave them in. We just make a note in their contact log that this inmate has this piercing located here, and that's what we do. Okay, and we, and we remove jewelry from inmates because sometimes the jewelry itself or their property can pose a threat to the safety and the security of the facility, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, otherwise we would just, if that if, if it wasn't a safety risk, we would just leave correct. jewelry on. Okay. Right, people fight over it, they'll, you know, they'll get beat up, and somebody will, if they got a ring that we can't get off, you know, we, we do our best to try and get off. We put lubricant on it and try and help them take it off. But if they got it on, a lot of times they'll be they'll get jumped in a dorm because they got a gold ring on or they got this piercing with a, a diamond or something on it. And then it'll be the other inmates trying to steal it from them. So, okay. so we remove as much of that as possible. Okay. All right. So I'm going to refer to uh, the response to resistance witness report that you authored on April 28th. Um, excuse me, 2016, and it refers specifically to the information that you witnessed um, as far as the use of force incident inside the, the facility. Um, is, this, is this the report that you authored? Yes, ma'am. Uh, CCR number is 2016-270778. Is everything that you read in here um, or that you wrote in here true and correct to the yes, best of your knowledge? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and then to refresh your memory, you had to review uh, Officer Smith's response to resistance report. Uh, and to the best of your memory, is everything that she put in there also true and correct about what occurred with Ms. Martinez? Yes, ma'am. Is there anything that you recall that wasn't included in, in either of these reports or the other, the additional RTR witness reports authored by um, Officer Jennings, uh, Officer Thigpen, Officer Paget. Hold on, I made a mistake here. Hold on. Yes, Thigpen. I'm sorry, Thigpen, Baker, Paget, Jennings. Um, and we're the first reviewer in all of those reports, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, was there anything in those reports that you don't recall occurring, or um, is there any other information that needs to be placed on record? Sure. No, I mean, everything that's in these reports is on the note, it's true and factual. Okay. Um, in inside the facility, pause it there. I'm gonna hand you the. Yeah. This will be marked as well. We'll put the recording on as plaintiffs A, and then this will be plaintiffs B. Right, I'm going to show you a response to resistance witness report. Is this the report that was referenced in the uh, recording that we were listening to? <coughs> this is the one that I wrote, yes. Okay, thank you. And when did you write this report? 
uh, looks like on April 28th, the day after the incident. Okay. Now, the top of this, it says response to resistance witness report, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And I think we touched on this earlier, um, but did you write a response to resistance witness report for the incident that occurred in the Sally Port? No, sir. But you did write a response to resistance witness report for the incident that occurred on the intake vestibule? Yes, sir. Why did you not do a response to resistance witness report for the incident that occurred in the Sally Port? I did not witness the incident that occurred in the Sally Port. Fair enough. Do you know if any of the officers wrote a response to resistance report? I do not know. Okay. Now, what is the purpose of these? What is the purpose of these reports? Why are these reports written? To document an incident. Okay. Now, second sentence of the narrative here. I believe it says, inmate Martinez appeared to be under the influence of an unknown substance. Third sentence. Inmate Martinez was very animated in her actions and language. Did you, is there anywhere in here that mentions that Miss Martinez was punched before going back to the intake vestibule? Is there anything mentioned in this response to resistant reports that indicates that you uh, told Officer Smith to uh, forget your exact wording, but to be lenient with Miss Martinez? No, sir. Is there a reason why that was not included in, the, in this report? That was not part of this incident. Do you think that Miss Martinez being punched affected her actions and her language that was being used during this incident? Section of form. understand uh, that sometimes we have multiple officers that would um, come and assist in a use of force incident. Um, why is that? Why would we have this many officers um, assist Officer Smith in a use of force incident? Because it reduces injuries to the inmate and the officers. The more officers you have, the less likely anybody is going to be injured. Okay. You can gain control quicker and get them in restraints. Okay. So the questioner in, in your recorded statement asks you, uh, refers to the incident that occurred in the intake vestibule as a use of force incident. Would you consider Officer Borisati's actions against Martina, Ms. Martinez in the Sally Port a use of force incident? You can answer. Yes. And in this case, she was um, placed in, in restraints. Yes, um, and then did we, I think as an agency, didn't we assign a female officer to accompany her to the different uh, areas like property and... 
Uh, for her safety. Well, uh, Lieutenant Mitchell escorted her from the property area where her clothing was inventoried and placed in a proctor room. Lieutenant Mitchell escorted her around to the booking area. And after that point, I honestly do not have a clue. Okay. Um, at what point during the use of force incident inside the bathroom in the facility did you come out of the um, the control pod? Do you recall? Oh, when it first started. As soon as they started going, as soon as I saw them starting a tussle, I went out there and the other officers out there all at the same time. We went in there, the officers responded into the bathroom with her to help gain control over her. And I don't think I was actually inside the bathroom. I was either in the doorway or just outside of it. So you I basically observed. Yeah. Okay, do you recall, do you, <laughs> did, right, because you're a supervisor, Sergeant, did you observe anything to that you believed was out of policy or procedure? No, ma'am. Nobody, there was no extracurricular. She asked you if you saw anything outside of policy for the incident that occurred inside the intake vestibule. Yes, sir. Did you see anything outside of policy that you observed on the video occurring in the Sally Port? Sure. Yeah. You can answer. Ms. Martinez was actively physically resisting. She started to kick Officer Brasati two or three times. I'm not exactly sure the number of times she attempted to kick him. So he did use force against her. I would have chose a different route, but I'd say, yeah, he chose poorly in, in the force that he used. Nobody punching her, kicking her, doing anything beyond just gaining control of her and placing her in, in the restraints. Okay. And had you observed that, you would have reported it to your chain of command, is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Okay. Is there any other information that's pertinent to what occurred in the Sally Port um, and what occurred in the bathroom that I have not asked you that you feel is important that we place on record? Do you, just that we tried, we, we, after the incident occurred out in the, in the southern port, I made it clear to my, to Officer Smith, let's try not to have a use of force with her. Seeing her actions, seeing how she was acting, I knew it was likely that we would, but we were trying, we were trying our best not to. We were trying to get her through the process without having any more incidents happen with her. Do you know who notified the patrol chain of command of, um, I do not. The incident at the Sally Port. I do not. No, do you I recall had, if you notified your lieutenant? I had spoke to the PIC, so if that's notifying the chain of command, then I would have. But it was for Sally. I don't even know his name. Borsati. Well, Borsati. Mm -hmm. Borsati was the one that actually called his PIC. I spoke to his PIC. But you notified your lieutenant of what occurred, or do you recall? I do not recall notifying my lieutenant. I remember my lieutenant showing up in the area back there and asking about it. So I do not know if I actually called them and told them or if they had heard because everything that was going on, this was relatively quick and there was a whole lot going on. So. Okay. Do you recall if you were involved with the notification of integrity to respond to the jail? I was not. I want to say that was Lieutenant, Lieutenant, um, what's his name? Was? There was a Lieutenant came, he said right in, in our pod, the lieutenant that came, was he a corrections lieutenant or a police lieutenant? He's a police lieutenant. I'm pretty certain it was Lieutenant Judge at this point. Is Lieutenant Judge still employed with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. As far as I know, he is. Thank you. I think he might be an assistant chief now. Okay. Thank you. And called and was very loud and very aggravated and said, Integrity is coming out there that if he had to, he would take the guy's badge himself if they didn't do their job. Okay. Who is he refer Is he referring to Officer Borsati? Yes, sir. Um, all right. Judge. Is there, Lieutenant Judge. Lieutenant Judge. Is there any other uh, information that you feel is pertinent that I haven't asked you? No, 
Ma'am. Any other witnesses to the Sally Port other than the officers that were standing out, out there and Officer Bukowski who was inside the pod with you? Any other witnesses that you're aware of? No, ma'am. Okay. And other than the officers listed here on the response to resistance reports, any other witnesses, I believe Lieutenant Prescott? Lieutenant was, Mitchell, Lieutenant Prescott. Okay. They didn't have witness reports, but Lieutenant Prescott was sitting there when I talked to her as it states in, the, in my witness report and in Officer Smith's report. I attempted to counsel with her when she was coming out of the intake of the, uh, the change room I-3 and she had been kicking, was still out belligerent. I was trying to calm her down, but they were there. She had her panties and frankly hit me with the panties, which she, which she missed. We're talking about the inside the uh, pit area bathroom. No, we are talking about outside the pit area okay. in the property room area okay. Okay. where we you. took her to change her clothes, where we gave her the opportunity. We took the restraints off, asked her to put on the uniform. She came out, she had her panties in her hand, which it's, this is in the reports. Okay. And then she was still just being loud, very animated, and almost hit me with her panties. At that point, it was made clear to her. And the, this incident with, with the panties, is this, did this happen after the use of force incident within the bathroom? Yes, sir. Okay. So we had taken her down in the bathroom. I got a uniform for her because we restrained her, put a put a top on her because she was topless. I think the only thing she was wearing at the time was her panties. She took a romper off. Um, so we put a top over her to escort her around to the I-3 holding cell, which is what we use for our females because there's no windows on the side, so nobody can look in from the outside. So we put her in there, explained to her, hey, put this uniform on, calm down. She said she would cooperate. She would put the uniform on. So we got it, put her in there, closed the door. She started banging and kicking. She had her uniform on when I opened the door to talk to her. I was trying to counsel her. I was like, calm down, again, de-escalating it, as we were saying. De-escalating the situation. She had her panties in her hand. She's like, here, you want these? And it literally is like, whoa. So I was like, put your hands at your sides. Don't do that again. You know, so, and that's, that's what that was. Okay. Okay. Put her hands to her side and don't do that anymore. But she complied. And we were able to start processing again. Okay. But she was still very, very drunk. She, I don't know, she's drunk, high, whatever. Under the influence of something. And, and was somewhat cooperating, but mostly not. Okay. Uh, everything you told me today, the truth? Yes, sir. Anything you want to change or clarify? No, ma'am. Okay. Other than I did not make anything up. We <laughs> clarified it. All right. This interview is concluded at 3.37. Let me just review my notes real quick. This. Lieutenant, I just have one question. If you take a look at your um, witness report, it's Exhibit A, correct? B. Oh, what is A? The audio. Oh, okay, so this is B. Yes. Um, about um, four or five lines down in the second full paragraph, there's reference to a prostrate chair. Do you see that? If she continued with me, I informed inmate Martinez if she continued with her actions, she would be placed in a pro strength chair for her safety. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Did you ever have um, Ms. Martinez placed in a pro strength chair? We did not. She, uh, again, she, she was agitated. She was complying, but again, still animated. We did put place her back in one piece for strengths. Uh, because she was at the property window, 
she was yelling at the property officer. I want to say she was telling him that he should be proud that he can count or something. She, w she was just berating the, the property officer and kept getting up and down. And so we placed her back in one piece restraints just to ensure that she didn't escalate any higher and, and wind up with another use of force. So you did not uh, have her placed in a pro train chair, is that what you said? No. Yes, sir. Uh, are you aware that she was ever placed in a pro train chair during the uh, intake process? No, sir. Um, a minute ago, you, I'm sorry, not a minute, you just used a phrase, one piece restraint. Yes, sir. Would you describe to the jury what a one piece restraint is, please? One piece restraints has a set of handcuffs with a chain between it that runs to ankle shackles. They have a, probably a 16 or 18 inch piece of chain between the ankle shackles so that they can walk and their hands would be held towards their waist. That way they can't fight, actively fight or fight well. Anyway, people do try and fight. And, 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 and uh, if you would, just explain the obvious reason that an inmate might be placed in a, in a one-piece restraint. Again, it, it'll help de-escalate a situation. If an, if an inmate is unable to like swing at you or grab you, or it's, it's for officer safety, it's for their safety, it, can, uh, it eliminates, it helps lower the likelihood of an incident occurring. In your career, have you ever placed uh, an inmate in a one-piece restraint just for the heck of it? No, sir. Um, you would only do so if you felt it was necessary for the inmates' safety and for the security of the facility and the officers. Is that right? Yes, sir. No questions. Just a quick question. Uh, from the moment that Ms. Martinez came through the back door of the jail, did she give you any imp indication or impression that she was dizzy, debilitated, or injured in any way before she started interacting with you all? No, sir. Did she complain to you all that she was injured from anything that happened outside the jail or at Sally Ford? So let, let me clarify the previous question. She never stated that she was injured or complained of any injury or anything like that. The only possible injury that I would have seen would have been when she was sitting on the ground, not moving or sitting there where uh, Versace was saying she was faking, mm -hmm. you know, but other than that, there are no indications. She never complained of any injuries. She never, you know, never verbalized it or, or there was no, nothing, no visual signs of any limping or, you know, anything like that. And is it fair to say that this incident with Ms. Martinez was not the first physical altercation you've had with an inmate before? That's fair to say. Okay. And was your impression that she was fighting aggressively during her interaction in the bathroom? Four. You can answer. She was definitely trying to get away, pulling away from us. And, um, I want to say she was trying to harm an officer. So she was she was actively resisting, yes. I have no other questions. I'd, li I'd like to clarify what you just said. You said she was not trying to harm an officer from your perspective? You know, no, I, I, I don't want to say that. That isn't quite the way that should have been. Did it she appear was, to you that she was more tr so trying to get away, or as opposed to go on the attack? So her and Officer Smith were, Officer Smith was trying to take her to the ground. She was obviously not trying to go to the ground. Therefore, my officers responded, and with their assistance, they were able to place her on the ground and get her in restraints. And again, this incident occurred after the incident that occurred in the Sally Port. Correct. You, you'd mentioned, and Mr. Powell asked you some questions about some restraints, and, and you said that the reason that you use some of these restraints is for officer safety and for the safety of the arrestee. Is that correct? Correct. Is that in part because when, when an arrestee, for example, is handcuffed, 
they then cannot throw punches at a police officer. Is that correct? Yes. And if, they're, and if they can't throw punches at a police officer, then that makes it safer for both the police officer and for the arrestee. Is that correct? Yes. It also makes it impossible for the arrestee to punch back if an officer punches her. Is that correct? Objection to form. I'll withdraw it. I don't have any other questions. Just a quick follow-up to something uh, you were asked. So, in the bathroom, is it fair to say that she was actively resisting being handcuffed? Absolutely. Okay. And how many officers did it take to actively put her in handcuffs? Check to four. Can I answer? Can I answer that? Yeah. I had multiple multiple officers respond. Um, to the number that actually put her in handcuffs, I can't attest to, but I can say that when we do that, as so we get them on the ground, somebody will hold a leg down so they're not kicking the officers that are trying to get them in hand restraints. And then we have the one piece restraint, so you'll have an officer putting on a leg shackle. You have an officer putting on a wrist restraint. It, it's, it took multiple officers, and I don't know the exact number that came in. Sometimes it could be three, sometimes it takes five or six. This incident, whatever we have listed here would be the, the number of people, whatever responded to the video. More, more is better to a point. Again, it, it makes incidents quicker. There's less likelihood of officers being injured, the arrestees being injured. It just stops the conflict a lot, a lot faster before anybody can, hopefully before anyone gets hurt. I have no I have nothing. All right. Of, of the five or six officers that we're used to, Get Miss Martinez down in, in the bathroom. Did he have him throw any punches? Not that I saw. No further questions. Okay, that concludes the deposition. It is 10.50. We'll read.